Well, good afternoon. This is part two of my uh, uh, 8340B uh, repair uh, video. If you uh, remember back to the uh, first video, uh, I bought uh, this 8340 from uh, the Department of Defense. And uh, according to the technicians that worked on it, it was beyond economical repair. Now, I thought, well, that's you know quite possible. You know, we saw the the how it worked. We saw that it was unleveled and uh, that sort of thing. And uh, it could have really required me to spend quite a bit of money to buy uh, replacement boards. So what I thought I'd do is actually go out and uh, not only get uh, the extender boards that I needed to do the work on it, but I'd also buy the uh, actual calibration manuals and then the assembly level service manual. Uh, for the unit uh, to be able to get the original documents. Now, the reason I wanted to do this, you can go get um, the documentation for the 8340 online. Uh, it's strewn around, though, and it's all bad scans. And unfortunately, none of the scans are searchable. But uh, by buying these uh, 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 manuals, what I could do is I could take the particular uh, sections that I was working on and I could drop them in my scanner uh, I have one of those multifunction printer thingies and I can drop it in the scanner and then suck in the PDF scan and run it through the, the Nuance paper port stuff and it would do an OCR of the manual and give me a searchable PDF. Now this is nowhere as good as the professional jobs that uh, uh, Artec manuals do and uh, you know, trust me I wouldn't have bothered to do this if the Artec manuals would have been available so I would have used those guys uh, myself, but anyway, let's uh, take a look. What I was doing in this manual was I was going through uh, section five here, and specifically section five uh, fourteen, because if you remember, the problem that I was having was that uh, the unit would go unleveled during its sweep, and so there is a bunch of uh, stuff that you do as you go through this section. Uh, to set all the items, there's about, I think, you know, if we go back in, you know, there's like 80 different steps that you'll go through uh, to go uh, do this. And you can see that uh, uh, the manuals are fantastic. You just don't get manuals like this these days. Uh, HP really did a great job. But the, you know, they have all these steps you go through and you uh, have to do all these tasks and then you measure stuff and then a lot of these things are all interrelated. So you make some changes then you have to go back and then you keep iterating until you get the, the the best possible output that you get. And then you end up doing it a couple of times because you don't really know what you're expecting to get the first time and so on. And so I spent probably 12 odd hours working through all of these sections here trying to get the unit to work. And what I was starting with was just say, can I get the RF level? Because I think the unleveled problem is that there is too much RF level coming out and it's forcing when I get up into band 4 which is the 20 gigahertz the 26 gigahertz it's forcing the unit to become unleveled so if I can get the le unleveled uh, right then that will then get me the leveled aspect and then at that point maybe that will address my problem so I went through and I did uh, 1514 and then uh, I jumped over the ALC adjustments because there's a bunch of stuff there um, but uh, I didn't want to touch those and I went because I assumed that the ALC let's just make an assumption that the ALC uh, is working and hadn't been modified by the guys uh, in the military that were trying to get the device working so I just made that assumption I don't know how valid it was but uh, that was the thing and then I could go and work on this level output and again you go through a bunch of these settings trying to get uh, to the end of it where you will have uh, a completed item that isn't squeaking and so what you'll actually see is you'll see on a spectrum analyzer a nice clean output at a single frequency and so that is what um, uh, I was doing and I, I, I said I spent 12 maybe 15 odd hours try working through this and going through all these steps and and that and twiddling the wrong knob and then having to come back and start again and all this stuff and so this morning I finally said I, I'm done. I'm done for the day. This is starting to feel like work and not uh, a hobby. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll finish with that and then I'll start, uh, I'll put the unit covers back on and everything and uh, 
uh, just set it aside and I'll come back to it. And so when I was you know, prepping to do that, I thought, well, I'll take a look at the assembly level manual because the assembly level manual uh, has a set of, and let me, oh, drink of choice uh, for this evening is a celebratory, uh, you know, Gentleman Jack. And so uh, uh, I might have given a little spoiler for what happens at the end of this video. Anyway, I thought I'd go through this because what it does, it explains not only the theory of operation, but it gives you some idea of the steps that you should travel uh, through to, to go and find something and so uh, find the, the problem. And so the problem I was having was this unlevel enunciator. But while I was flicking through this, I hit the section on the calibration constants. And I don't know if, you know, I, I, I love manuals. I really do love manuals. I love reading manuals uh, and so on. I, when I bought my, uh, my F-150, I you know, was probably one of the few guys that actually, you know, the new model year was coming out and I had read the F-150 manual from end to end prior to the, the you know, my truck actually being delivered to the dealer. Um, that might be a sad commentary on my life, but uh, uh, I went and saw this and I thought, oh, you know, calibration constant stuff. I, I'll have a bit of a read of what that, uh, what it is, you know, and it sort of took my, uh, you know, uh, attention away. But as I was going through this stuff, I noticed this item here, how to restore the factory optimized calibration constants. And you know, I thought, I'll do this. What I'll do is I'll go get the piece, I'll get the data and I'll go return the unit to its start of play and then will be good to go. So, you know, then I'll put it aside and everything could be, be set. So let me show you where the, I think I showed you this in the first video, but, uh, uh, you know, I went over to the device and I grabbed uh, the, the paper. So here's the unit. Um, what I have is I had to tilt it on its side. You know, we had it sitting on its top. Uh, but I did that so that we could get to this item down here. And if we zoom in a bit, you'll see this little holder with the calibration data. And inside of here is this little sheet of paper. And this sheet of paper, if we unfold it, has, and I showed this before, has all of the calibration constants. So there are going to be about a hundred odd items uh, that are calibration. Some of them are unused, some of them will not change. Uh, but, you know, these are from when the last time it was actually calibrated. And so, you know, I thought I'd grab these, go put them into the unit, and uh, see what happened. Alright, so here's the, the unit. It's uh, in its upside down configuration because I haven't put the, uh, the top case back on. But, I followed the instructions and I put all of the calibration data in and lo and behold when we turn the unit on you'll see it boots up successfully and you'll notice that the unleveled enunciator is no longer showing and the sweep uh, button is on so we're actually running the unit in a proper sweep mode. And so now, if I actually come in and set a value, say like one, uh, say 10 uh, uh, gigahertz, you'll see that uh, I'm still getting on, the power level is zero. And if I go and, uh, uh, if I was to go and attach a, I've already done this, I won't do this again. But if I was to go and attach uh, one of my power sensors, so, you know, uh, my little uh, 8481A here, um, to the unit, what I will get is, is I'll see that at uh, 0 dBm, which is what's said here, uh, I'll actually read about uh, 0.6 dBm, and at 10 gigahertz, the uh, uh, expected uh, 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 mismatch in terms of uh, dB, I believe from the specifications, is plus or minus 2 dB, uh, 2 dBm, uh, for the uh, the value that you read. So I'm operating within spec. Uh, I went through all of the steps that uh, tweaked all of these items to get them correct. I'm guessing that what had happened was that somebody during the process must have changed the calibration constant or something 
and that caused uh, uh, the issue because the ch making these changes myself to the actual pots here uh, I went through the process and it didn't uh, address it but setting the calibration constant back to the original uh, values uh, made this all work and so we can confirm that there's no squeaking occurring and that we're getting a clean value by taking a look on the spectrum analyzer so let's set that up and take a look okay so here we have uh, my 8563E uh, spectrum analyzer and uh, what we're seeing here is we're seeing the signal uh, from the the, the uh, the unit. If we go in and set uh, center frequency of 10 uh, gigs and then uh, put a, a marker on that and we do a peak search, we'll see that uh, uh, we're getting, and I have the unit set to 0 dBm, we're uh, seeing about 0.33 of a, a dBm through the cable at 10 gig. Let me set the power level to minus 10 dBm and you should see that drop down so we're getting nice accurate within spec uh, power and so if I do a span of say 10 megahertz on that span 10 oh okay how to set center there we go so let me do a peak search there's our 10 gig peak so we're seeing nice uh, a nice peak there you know, and I can step our bandwidth down. So it looks like we're getting a pretty good uh, uh, signal. So what I want to go uh, do is to go now and check to see whether or not I'm getting some spurious signal. So let's reset that. And what it tells me, that 10 gig, that I should have um, uh, harmonics, subharmonics, and non-harmonically related spurious uh, signals between you know 35 will um, a dB down and for harmonics 25 dB down for subharmonics and multiples thereof and 64 dB down for uh, other items other spurious signals and if we look at the spectral purity you know again 45 44 54 59 so if I go in here and I make use of what I have on this unit is I have the uh, um, Spurious signals analysis module. So if I select that, select user keys, and go in and set spurs, what I can do is I can tell it to go take a look at uh, uh, spurs that are in there. And so we can say, okay, you know, I want to look and see at everything, you know, uh, across. So if I tell it to configure, I'm going to go, and I don't know how long this will take. So the minimum search frequency, and this is a 10 megahertz uh, unit. minutes you know the maximum uh, frequency is going to be 26.5 uh, gigahertz okay so if I run that that's going to take me three hours but you'll see here that I have the lowest search threshold of minus 85 dB what I know is if we look at the, let me see if you can see that, if we look at the values for spectral purity in that band, minus 64 dB is the key value that uh, we need to check out. And you'll see that nothing else is greater, you know, everything else should be uh, uh, checked higher than that. So I can ignore anything that is 64 dB uh, or more down. So let me change that limit threshold to be minus 64 dB. So there you go. So now to do that uh, check, it's going to take me 16 seconds. So I'm good with that. And let's go and measure those values.
one thing I just remembered is I'd set it to minus 10 dB. So let's set it back to power level 0 dB. Let's measure those spurs again. Because remember, these values are from the level that you've set. So uh, I could go in and say that they're going to be uh, uh, minus 74 dBm. But uh, in this particular case, we can look at them again. And we can see here that we've got uh, several results. So if we take a look, you see that we get uh, harmonics should be uh, 35 dB or, or better. You know, so we're seeing that, you know, around there, some subharmonics and multiples thereof, you know, we're seeing pretty good uh, values because, you know, everything, the next worst value is harmonics should be at minus 35. So I'd expect 25, 20, you know, 10, 20, uh, well, 10, because that's our carrier, it's a center frequency, but 20, you know, and then the subharmonics and multiples thereof, you know, we're seeing around the 5s, the 20, the 15s, the 25s. So overall, we're getting uh, a signal that seems to be, uh, you know, matches what the specification is. So I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, what this means is that I have uh, what appears to be a completely working 8340B that I got from uh, an Air Force auction. Needed uh, a little bit of adjustment of the items here and then resetting the calibration content constants. So I hope you found uh, these two-part series interesting and uh, I look forward to catching you in the next video. Catch you later. Bye.